So welcome everybody. <laughs> the music and stuff. And I was like, where'd the music stop? <laughs> we got it figured out. So welcome everybody. Enjoy. Are you familiar with the pan? What's it called? Pan? Hand pan or the hung drum. This is amazing. Enjoy. Enjoy. And if any of you can play this and you have one, please bring it. <laughs>
incredible stuff. Welcome to a gentle, loving space this morning. And welcome to our first intergenerational talk. And we'll explain a little bit more about what that is, but that is what I see happening here as, as we all come together and generations work together to bring about a new way of living. The Christ candle is lit here today, which represents that Christ consciousness that flows through us. And we light this candle as a representation, as a representation of that light. And it is beautiful. And I thank you all for being here. Statement of truth with me, if you would. There is only one presence, one power, active in the universe and in my life. God the good, the omnipotent. If you would, with me, our vision statement. Centered in God, we co-create a community that works for all. Now our prayer box. Um, We have a five-step process in everything we do here and and, and that five-step process in meditation is called number one I'm not going to go through all the details but just so you can start seeing it so you can start becoming more familiar with it relaxation meditation concentration realize realization and gratitude those are the five steps that we use to go into the meditation and prayer process and remember every thought is a prayer so I think we we have uh, this is from your friend and uh, she's down in Florida And what's her name? Her name is Donna Valentine-Fernandez. So if we can hold space for Donna as a congregation and say thank you. Good morning. And uh, who are our uh, chaplains today? We have three chaplains that are raising their hands. So if they will be stationed over here in the corners of the room at the end of service, if you would like to pray or, or give thoughts to and share so that they can work with you there. Also, this prayer box is all of our thoughts and prayers, and if you have a special request, you put it here, it goes into the box, just like that, and then we pray on it for 30 days and send it to Unity Worldwide Headquarters to Silent Unity, where they pray on it as well. Now we're going to go into our little prayer, and then we are going to state some words. And we also have something coming up really cool. I believe it's on August 27th. Um, Faye Ann Schmidt, Reverend Faye Ann Schmidt, will be here, and we will be doing a healing service. So I'd really like to get our prayer chaplains involved in that, too. That is now confirmed. Uh, She just graduated from the Urban Unity ministry where I am as well now and she's coming in to finish up an internship program and it's going to be really nice to have that prayer service that day so if you have just prepare for a day where we're really going to do some healing in here so of course we do that all the time so now if we close our eyes take a deep breath and we just say thank you mother father God thank you source thank you for everything that is that flows in and through us And in unity consciousness, we hold that space of knowing that we are light. We are good. This space is a space, is an ark, is a place where love is held always. And by creating the space we are creating, this is what we manifest. And so it is. Amen. And if you would repeat your own version of the Lord's Prayer in any way you choose. Our Father who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thine is done, on earth as it is in heaven. And we are given this day our daily bread and forgiven our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are led not into temptation, and we are delivered from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. This is where we invite you to stand, sing, let's get the energy moving. We brought in some love. Now let's up the energy for an ante, then we'll go back down. Sing along, you got the words. Feel free just to dance a little bit and have some fun. Something wonderful, something wonderful is happening to me right here, right now. Wonderful, something wonderful is happening to me right here, right now. 
So today's daily word is awakening. Divine revelations awaken in me or awaken me to greater understanding. Daily routines may keep me paused from fully experiencing life. As I move through my activities, I may be half conscious of my actions. Being awake is a state of consciousness. Still, when I remain present and wholly engaged in each moment and every activity, I begin to experience spiritual awakenings in every instant. Practices such as meditation, inspirational reading, and attending sacred services may aid in deepening my spiritual understanding. Spiritual awakening occurs when I dedicate myself to the awareness of spirit active in my life. Engaging in daily interactions and activities can also be catalyst to higher levels of consciousness. And our scripture for today is, The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Isaiah 60, 19. Yeah, I like to sit for this part. <laughs> Good morning. Namaste, everyone. So, if we can get uh, very relaxed and... Um, we saw that five steps, you know, the first part is relaxation. Relaxing our bodies and allowing our breathing to drop down into our lower abdomen. I'd like to start with three ohms and then the, um, I guess we'll call it a chant that's on the, on the screen.
We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. We are
chugs of wine get drunk Let the truth be known tonight Don't go let yourself hide Go and sing to the mountain Go and sing to the moon Go and sing to just about everything Cause everything is you Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful morning. Thank you for that contemplative, beautiful space we all just got to enjoy together. That was so beautiful to see. I mean, you were all just shining, just just shining. And I got to see your faces and y'all got to see each other's faces. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. Today, intergenerational talk, intergenerational. And we have our little one with us and we have a visitor with us that's going to speak today. I'll introduce all that in a minute. But I'm going to get through my part pretty quickly here. What's been coming up for me for the last couple of months? I keep seeing the ark. I keep seeing water. I keep seeing, and, and, and what does that mean? So, so I, I was looking at it and really thinking about it. And after this weekend, we had the most incredible weekend, folks. There were almost 40 people here from all over the region of the Southeast. People bringing guidance to what youth and family looks like. To them in, in, well, there weren't 200 churches here, but represented 200 churches, 200 unities. And they brought with them such power and energy in this room on Friday and Saturday that I just wish you all could have been here to feel it. And, and please know that anytime there is something, and whether you feel like you're called to it or not, but if you will just step into that energy, you're gonna, something's going to open up for you like it opened up for me. You know, I've been, I've been contemplating, okay, we have just so many amazing things have happened. This building happened. Our board has happened. Our, you know, I got to come here almost a year ago today and have a conversation when I was talking about building community. And I talked about what this young lady talked about from a whole different perspective, from a whole different generation. I got to hear what Miranda had to say, and so did this room. And it wakes us up and it makes us alive. But as these things happen, we're seeing this progress, this journey within our souls and watching what's happening here and we are at a place where we are drawing in energy and frequency that resonates with people for movement forward in ways that is brand new because we know the energy and the frequency on this planet is changing day by day so quickly so I think what I'm feeling is especially when I when I when I heard you the other day and I've got the arc on my on my heart and I've got and so in in doing my work, my studies, my homework, last night, after everything was over, I looked up the ark and uh, was studying on it and meditating on it, and, uh, and, and, and some things related to it. Um, the meta, metaphysical term of the Noah in Genesis, Lamach means a strong young man and signifies the strength of youth. And Noah means rest. This is really interesting stuff for the times that we're in in the world. Thus it is in the strength of our youth that we idealize the material and attach to our spiritual enthusiasm to the things of sense. <laughs> Come here, Chi. <laughs> Come on. She's a trickster. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Gee, come here, baby. Come here. Come on, baby. Come here, baby. Come on. Stay, 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 stay. <laughs> Wasn't that sweet? She wanted to be here with us. Would have loved to have her. But the law of rea- Okay. The uh, ideals, the, the material, and attach our spiritual enthusiasm to things of sense, so of the material, right? So when we're young, we attach to those things, then we grow. But the law of reaction sets in. So once that happens, there's going to be a law of reaction, which is that word Noah finds favor in the eyes of Jehovah. If in the strength of your youth you have indulged in the things of sense, 
which we all were young, we've all had youth, we all understand. If you have indulged in the things of sense, the law of spiritual equilibrium, the Lord Jehovah is now working itself out in rest. Noah stands for rest. So it's working itself out in rest. And you may have bodily ills. This is where the race of wicked thoughts are drowned and your earth is cleansed. You know, when I look at what's happening on our planet and we are looking at how do we create this space? What is this going to look like? Does this just look like the same old thing we've seen forever and forever that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it holds space for community? It's growing. It's changing because consciousness is growing and it is changing. No matter what we do, it's not going to stay the same. Everything is going to evolve, and our idea of holding that space, this ark, as Charles Fillmore puts it metaphysically, the ark is the container. It is the container for the good that when the flood comes to cleanse our souls or to cleanse the earth like it did in Noah's day. When that comes and that cleansing occurs, the ark is what we hold. You can kind of, I kind of envision it as like up here above us, but it's also this place that we're creating. And in that place, what Charles Fillmore talks about is there is nothing but good. There is no ugly. There is light and there is love. So when we come into this space, this is what we create. We create love and we hold it for each other. There is no gossip. There is no talk. There is no anger. There is love, love, love. And when you come here, you feel safe in this space. I believe that's what we're creating, but I also believe that metaphysically we're creating it on a much bigger level than right here in our little unity of Blairsville or big unity of Blairsville, whatever you want to call it. Through the youth, through the consciousness, through the experiences that we've had out there in the world, that we bring into this place and we try to hold up in the ark of Noah, a safe space for all of us to talk and be and love each other, where there's genuine smiles, there's genuine love going on between each and every eye we touch in here. That's what the ark is. That's what it represents, that higher place of who we are, people. Our communication skills get in the way sometimes, don't they? We're learning new ways. We have classes we're teaching to show us how to better do this work together. Right now, I would like to introduce to you this amazing lady, and I wish I had time to talk about all the other people that were here that just made this past weekend transform into something that I can now see. I couldn't see what was going to happen after September 23rd when we have that event down at Meeks Park where we now have access to 200 churches within the region, 200 unities within the region, and maybe five will show up, maybe 10 will show up. But they have all been invited to be at this event. So when people come to hear the music on September 23rd, and they come to honor diversity in each of us at this event that we are throwing and cooperating with people like the Non-Bullying Foundation and people that want to honor people and not stay where we are, but, but constantly honor and love each other through whatever we're going through, whatever that metaphysical arc is that we are creating for ourselves from our own perceptions. That's what this is about. It's about the next generation of what's coming forward because we did the best we could growing up, and we will continue to do that, and we're going to continue to learn and grow. Miranda Baker recently graduated. Would you stand? And thank you for the last-minute notice. When she spoke, guys, it just spoke to my heart, and I, <laughs> and I put her on the spot in front of the group, and I said, I, this may be rude, Miranda. I said, but would you stay Sunday and share your message? Share where you're coming from. Share what the youth look like today in unity. This young lady has been in unity her whole life, right? She's a unity, and, and we watch them grow up. The oldest ones I've seen about 45, but this is what's coming out. This is the world unity is creating. Not me, not... It's, it's unity. It's all of us, and we're doing it in an etheric way. 
So Miranda Baker recently graduated from Elon University with majors in in religion and English and a minor in leadership studies. She's been in Unity for 19 years and held a number of leadership positions within Youth of Unity. Additionally, she completed the Leaders of Vision program as a YOUer and is looking at starting the CSA program this fall. She is currently a junior sponsor at Unity of Blue Ridge in Asheville, North Carolina, and she's offered to come and share what she shared with us this weekend. And I think you're going to be blown away and blessed and filled with the love that's coming through that this is what we are creating by youth and family ministry. And after we have that event on September 3rd, I envision now, and I can see because they helped me say, Bates, y'all can do this here. You are doing it. And they showed me what that room back there may look like that becomes our youth and family ministry. And now I can see it, and I hope you will be able to see whatever you see from Miranda. Thank you, Miranda. I got a little excited about it. Good morning, everyone. I'm Miranda. Uh, I got to meet a couple of you this weekend. Um, And I'm a young adult. You can't tell that from looking at me, can you? All right, so this weekend I presented on supporting young adults in unity, how we can do that on an interpersonal level, on a church level, um, and how we can reach out to the young adults in the community to bring them in. So, maybe? Oh, no, too far. So the first question I get asked most of the time is, What kind of technology do we need to have young adults here? Well, it's not about technology. Most young adults, yes, we love our technology, we live on our technology, but that's not what young adults are looking for for Sunday morning, for spirituality. A good, visually appealing, updated website is useful. They've got to find the information somewhere. Social media, if you've got it, great. If you don't, it's not the big, it's not the big deal. And video streaming, I've gotten asked that a number of times. If, is video streaming important to get young adults involved? And I would actually say no. Uh, they might watch a video, but more likely they're more, young adults are more likely to come to a community because they've been invited by somebody they know. So who are young adults today? What, are, what, are, what age group are we looking at? What are they doing? How are they affiliating? So this is from the Pew Research Center, uh, and it's a breakdown of religious identity by generation. So you can see older millennials and younger millennials there on the bottom. 34% of older millennials do not affiliate with any particular religious institution. And 36% of younger millennials Now, Unity doesn't even make this checklist. Think of last time you filled out a census form or um, standardized testing, any of that. You get your number of Christian denominations. Unity is never on there. So young adults in Unity usually choose between Christian, other, or none. And many of them, whether they're in Unity or just spiritual beings seeking community, they tend to put none there is not a religious institution, a community that they affiliate with. So this is the group that we're trying to reach out to. However, further research shows that these young adults, these unaffiliated young adults, still believe there is something out there. There's higher power. There is something more than just what we see. And a lot of these have fallen into the category of the spiritual but not religious. Probably a term many of you have heard. Uh, For the sake of abbreviation, I'll call it SBNR. Um, And here is a quote about SBNRs. We have become a nation of seekers of spiritual experience rather than dwellers in a firm religious location. Now, I imagine many of you resonate with this quote as well. Um, It's... Spirituality is so much more than just a building, a place, although you all have a wonderful space for spirituality and a wonderful community.
Oh, too far. No. Oh. <laughs> it's a very special remote. So what are young adults looking for then? Young adults <coughs> want to get involved. They want leadership. They want to be included. Um, I say they, we. Um, we want to have responsibility. And we want to do that in a place where we feel welcome and safe and loved. So one of the tips I shared with the youth and family ministry folks who were here this weekend was getting the youth involved before they graduate. Um, as I'm, I'm sure you are going to have a ton of teens here after the 23rd, I am envisioning that for you all, that you have a growing and blossoming youth program. But getting those teens involved before they graduate is so important. Getting them involved in more than just youth ministry. Maybe it's, um, what are some groups that you all have. I'm, I'm sure you all do service projects and outreach, at big events like the Unity and Diversity, getting them involved in the community before they graduate. When young adults come in, welcoming them, reaching out to them, saying, how can we help you feel welcome here to be a part of our community? Um, and a lot of times, Young adults have tons of resources. There are a lot of artists in this area, musicians, tons of talent to draw on. And those are ways that young adults can get involved and feel like they are contributing without having to contribute money or commit to something huge on top of jobs, school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And finally, ask and listen. Ask what do you all want, what do you want to see in this community? How can we, Unity of Blairsville, as a community, welcome young adults and then listen to them, take action steps with them? Um, there's something wonderful about getting young adults actually involved in the process. Um, I was addressing youth and family ministry, but these tips are just as useful for congregation. Providing space for young adults to meet, maybe it's a casual conversation after the service or food, um, but more importantly, be their voice. Be a liaison, get them involved, be welcoming. Help the young adults feel like they have a voice here, they can speak up, I'm sure you all are wonderful at that. I know I've just had some great experiences the couple times I've visited here before. Um, mentorship. I cannot stress how much mentorship can be influential in a young adult's life. Um, I personally kept in touch with a YOU sponsor from, I grew up in Unity North Atlanta, um, and he attended my college graduation. We talk every week, and we talk about unity, we talk about life, we talk about writing. Um, but he has always been there just a phone call away as a mentor. And it's wonderful. Young adults want mentorship. They want to see how do we figure out this thing called life. Because a lot of them are trying to figure out a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time whether they're in college or in a new job, either way, or even, you know, have been in a job for a while, young adults are still trying to figure so much out. Maybe? There we go. So reaching out. Where do you find young adults? Colleges are a good place. Uh, you've got Young Harris, North Georgia Tech here. Um, college lectures, usually open to the community, theatrical events, big events that the colleges put on, those are places to go and find young adults. It doesn't mean go and hand out pamphlets and flyers for Unity, we don't really do that, but you know, if you have a Unity t-shirt or start a conversation with a young adult and casually mention, hey, I go to this awesome place, you sound like you might like it. 
uh, there are ways to reach out to young adults, but it, it involves going out to them. We're a little shy, just a little bit. Homebodies, um, not really used to having conversations beyond texting, interpersonal conversations beyond peer-to-peer -peer are not necessarily something we're all used to. So going out to where the college kids are, where the young adults are, um, another point I brought up this weekend was young adults are at the forefront of the social justice movement. They are out there on the streets at the marches, the protests. Um, I don't know if Blairsville has a lot of marches or protests. They have a lot of festivals, though, and that draws uh, those, those events draw mixed crowds. But being there where the young adults are and saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what unity looks like, living the truth, the fifth principle. This is what unity is. And they will come. They just, they usually need to meet somebody first and be welcomed in. Um, it's hard to walk into a new space, a new community, and not know anyone. And finally, Inclusivity. Young adults want inclusivity, transparency, authenticity in the communities they find. Again, we're out there at the front of the social justice movement. We want to see diversity and see that welcomed in a community. Um, whether that's visually having a visually diverse community or being verbally inclusive. Uh, when speaking about God, maybe not limiting God to one or two genders. Um, talking about God as something bigger and beyond just an old man in the sky. Um, using inclusive language and pamphlets and welcome packets. Uh, and interpersonally, talking to people in a very welcoming and friendly way. Um, young adults have a knack for seeing through layers and... and um, Illusions. Uh, they have a, an ability to know when somebody is acting or saying one thing and not necessarily following through. They really want transparency, really want authenticity, and that is something I personally have always been able to find in Unity. So now it's just a matter of going out to the young adults and saying, hey, we have this. That community you're looking for, it's over here. Come hang out with us sometime. There's free food. Free food is always a plus for young adults. A meal that we don't have to pay for. <laughs> um, but it's also a good way to get people initially to an event. The community is why they stay. Free food might be the, why they come initially. Uh, but Unity is such a powerful place. You all know this. You're all here today. Um, so conveying to young adults that this is what unity is, um, that is how we bring more young adults in. That is how we get more involved. Saying this is a place, a community for the seekers, for the inclusive, for the spiritually curious. And they will come. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I can't mention anything about um, driving. To yes, to yes, uh, thank you. Um, not all young adults have a lot of resources. Um, Union County, I know, is especially a place, my mom lives here, just to also point out that I have uh, home ties here in Blairsville. Um, Union County especially, there are a lot of people who don't have access to transportation, a lot of people who want to be here who maybe don't have gas money to get here on Sundays. It's easier to walk to the church down the street or just not go at all. Um, but especially with young adults, having carpool available. Um, my four years at Elon University, uh, I had a car for about five months out of that entire time. I carpooled every week with a lady who lived down the street from the college. Every single week for four years, minus those 
five months where I had a functioning car. Um, she drove me to church and she drove me back to Elon afterwards. And she is the only reason I would have been able to go. She's the only reason I was able to get involved working in youth ministry and continuing helping to serve youth. Uh, so not only does a welcoming smile help, but sometimes carpooling, um, working with other, being aware of other resources, and also, you know, teaching young adults that we're not in a place of lack. Because sometimes if you don't have resources, it's really hard to get out of that lack thinking. So modeling that as well. Um, but yes, reaching out, helping with resources. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? If you had a piece of guidance to give as we grow our youth and family ministry from a, from a beginning space that we are, what would that be? What might that look like? Other than what you already given us. <laughs> Other than what I already gave you? Um, I mean, I, I said this, but being authentic is just very key with young adults and teens as well. Um, middle and high schoolers are also really good at seeing through hypocritical behavior and really like to focus on that. That's one thing I've experienced working with teens the last few years is they will call you out. Um, and young adults will do the same. They're just a little more subtle about it usually. Um, beyond being authentic, uh, I think just being willing to listen, involve them in planning, especially around young adult activities, bringing in more young adults, bringing in more teens, get them involved, uh, include them in that process. Yes? Are there any uh, classes or workshops that you uh, think might be particularly, or topics of discussion that you think might be particularly interesting to them? To young adults? Um, Meditation is usually a good place to start. Um, drum circles have had some good luck. Uh, some of us young adults like reading Fillmore and <laughs> just sitting down with a book and breaking through it or working through it. Um, that really is just going to depend on the young adults who show up. Um, Sometimes it's social events, sometimes it's service projects. It just depends on the group. And that's something when you have more people coming in, just working with them, what do they want to do? Yes? How do you approach this youth? They're so sick of religion. How, uh, what's your opening line? Hi. How are you? What's your name? Um, have a conversation about just life. And... If a place to work in unity comes up, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. You've made a connection. And if you go back to the event, run into that young adult again, then that connection has already started. They're going to be more receptive to finding out who you are, what your community is, what you're involved in. Um, but that first conversation doesn't have to be specifically about unity. Uh, it's not evangelizing. Um, we're not going door to door. It's about forming those relationships, and then people are more receptive. Just like any other person, you know, if I wanted to tell my best friend about unity, I would tell my best friend about, you know, here's what I do on Sundays, take it or leave it. But now that they've heard about that, they're more willing to come see what it is. Um, with a stranger, I would just start out in building a friendship first and then say, this is what unity is. This is what I do on Sundays. Want to come with me one day? Um, and I've had that happen with a couple of my friends from college. I had a friend who was Buddhist who was like, okay, this sounds cool. I want to come see what unity in Greensboro is. So she came with me one day and um, walked away going, hey, there was some really cool stuff that I really resonated with. Um, and I've had other friends who have done the same and other friends who have said, oh, that sounds cool, and 
You know, maybe they didn't get the time or the resources to go, but making that first connection, building the relationships, that is um, the important thing with outreach. Um, for an example, there was a community church right next to, it was a United Church of Christ, uh, right next to the college I went to. And there were a number of people there who were at every religious studies and religious life lecture, everyone. I was on a first name basis with about half of them. They told me about their grandkids and their church and, and what they were doing that week. And they would continually invite me over and many other of us who were regulars at those lectures. Um, some people went. I had Unity in Greensboro. But it's about being there, being present, showing up, making those relationships. Does that answer the question? Yes. Can you explain uh, the acronyms that we go by in Unity, like the Unitines and the YOU and the NGs? And that? <laughs> um, so Unitines is middle school. YOU, or Youth of Unity, is high school. NGU is a somewhat struggling organization. It's Next Generation Unity. Uh, it's supposed to be 18 to 35. There's not really one in the Southeast. There's not really uh, NGU events right now. Um, some of the larger chapters have young adult groups that meet. Um, but NGU is what it's called nationally. Miranda. I would like, if you would like, when service is over, if you would be open to conversations, individual conversations. Absolutely. Uh, just be really blessed. We're just blessed to have this energy here. And, and thank you. Miranda has also, this is amazing. You don't, I, actually, I don't want you to leave and leave. Just hang up here with me. Let's hang out together. But uh, Miranda has offered to be the lead for our youth portion of, not just the youth, but the lead to help organize the event on September 23rd. And that's powerful for us. Very, very powerful. Um, she's very connected and, 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 and understands, and is smart. She even graduated from college. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would like to do, stay over here with me if you would, just hold the energy like, you're, like you do so beautifully. You know, we talk about tithing. We talk about treasures, time, and talents. And I remember coming in here when I first started and, and talking about this in community. We have boomers like had, she had on her, on, her, on her chart. We have different ages of millennials. We have different ages of X generation. We have people that have money to tithe, and those are usually the older ones of us, you know, that, that have been around longer, have had more substantial jobs, not just getting out of college. But in the other comes the strength, there comes time, there comes talent, and each of us have things like that we can contribute. And when you're growing a new congregation and you're looking for youth and family, what you experience, what we experience is that sometimes our tithes, our physical tithes to take care of the building, they seem to level off because we're growing a new energy and that takes time. It takes what Miranda was talking about, like going to events, meeting people, not proselytizing unity, not saying, you know, what do you do? Where do you go for it? But getting to know these people. And you don't do that overnight. You go, you experience, you create a place in community. And I believe that's what Unity is doing, especially with the event on the 23rd. Since I couldn't figure out where to go to find the millennials, what seemed to come to us was we could create a space. So that's what we're doing. We're creating a space where children, younger ones, Middle-aged ones, uniteens, YOUers, adults, their grandparents can come to a space and honor our youth and then find the place in which they want to contribute, whatever that looks like. But remember, we are a growing ministry and we're changing the way it looks sometimes. So that's uncomfortable for some. So as we go into our offering, I'm going to ask you to just hold that time of time, treasure, and talents. And we do... The cash is so important. 
but the energy that's coming through what we're creating here is so important too. So balance that in, in, in our own lives, in our own hearts, in our own reaching out. Repeat with me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. And I am grateful and I got ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs> Every unity does it different. put our hands together and bless our ties and energy and love in this room, we repeat, we dedicate and consecrate these gifts of love to the will, the way, and the work of God, and so it is. Thank you very much. Now, we welcome our visitors. Do we have any new visitors, first-timers with us today? Good. I thought we had one. I'm not going to say anything. We've got a packet for you. Hope you'll take time to read the information. It's great. Thank you for attending the meditation class this morning at, at 10 with Thomas. Uh, just remember those are always going on. It's so good to have you with us. Acknowledgements. Miranda Baker, thank you. Barbara. All of the team that was here to help this weekend. We really had an amazing youth program that happened here this weekend and it reached out and now people I want to mention a couple of things I know I'm running a little over today but it was it's a it's a powerful time where we're in we are in this energetic powerful powerful place so we had uh three four or five people depending on the part of the weekend that came up to Chi House and actually got to experience what we originally put together when 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 I first came here everybody was like hey we'd like to have more people come to Blairsville from different places well this first conference did that and they're also staying at a place that we can call healing at Chi House and the rates start at thirty dollars a night just to show you how inexpensive that is. And it was designed so people could come here. They could come and pray. And we had that first experience with our first unity group. We've made good movement. We are making amazing progress. And I can tell you, the people that came here said, wow, you've got all that going on. And how long y'all been doing this? We are doing good things. And we keep hearing it from all of, the, all of our family, churches and friends and centers. And, and people are lifting us up. Let's put it that way. The other thing, if you will please go to, um, I'm staying on my acknowledgments, let me, this is more of an announcement, but Unity and Diversity, go to Facebook. We are beginning to build all this now, so you can go to, to Facebook and look at Unity and Diversity Celebration. There's also a Unity and Diversity Celebration page that you can volunteer on. So if you would like to volunteer that day, this is a free event that we're doing. This is being funded by Friends from Community of Chi and the uh, Foundation for Non-Bullying and other organizations that are just wishing to participate. So go in, say, I want to volunteer and say what it is you want to do and connect with the meeting planners from uh, Chattanooga who are helping put that together and helping fund this event for us. Um, I'd like to remind you at 12 o'clock today, new members orientation is at, at 12 o'clock. I'll be hosting that. Uh, so, and then our new member orientation induction is next Sunday. So please be here to welcome everybody that's new, that's going to be new members. And if you don't have time to come today and you want to get with me anytime this week, I will hold a one-on-one -on -one class or a two-on-two -two class and we'll go through the new member orientation so that you can be inducted into this wonderful community called Unity. Uh, did I, are there other things that we need to announce for this week? Um, Wednesday evening, um, with, after potluck, I'll be conducting a presentation called Conflict or Kindness, and it's been going really well, and you don't, even though it's been a series, you can come anytime and come in and participate, and um, it's been a really wonderful interactive group that we've been having, so please come um, with, if you'd like potluck or afterwards, it starts at 6.30 this Wednesday. Also, we've been having uh, monthly Reiki healing um, circles. Uh, we were hoping to have them on the first Tuesdays of each month, but that's not happening. This is always this volume on the second Tuesday, so we may switch it. Second Tuesday of August, we'll be having a Reiki Healing Circle 6 to 8 
five dollars. Um, we're asking for participants um, who want to come and experience uh, the flow of energy from practitioners for healing. Um, the money will go to the Youth Ministry Fund. And we have Course in Miracles every week, um, study group at 11 o'clock in the morning. Any, any other burning desires to share? Uh, what's the time? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> the time on the Reiki event. Though. It's 6 to 8 p.m. Um, as long as you come by 7.30, then each person will receive a 20-minute session and we'll be able to get everyone in. It's powerful stuff. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you all for Thank what you. you're all doing. Oh, and we have a new social media lead. Jillian, and this is a really, we, we, we called out asking a few weeks ago and Jillian showed up. So Jillian is, it, thank you. The outreach we can do through our social media is powerful and now we have someone leading that. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all you're doing, Jillian. What was the other one on our list? There was another new person, a graphic designer. We have a woman um, that's retired taking courses at uh, Young Harris that I've spoken with and we'll meet with this coming week to help us with doing graphics design on flyers and certain things like that on our website. So, we, you know, yay, these are powerful things that we haven't had access to yet, but they're coming, they're showing up, and it's really stuff that can help us move forward out into the community because we'll have the resources to do that now. And I just want to say thank you real quick that all of these things that we're putting on are open to anyone in the community. So if you have any friends or family or anybody who wants to come and experience anything, they're more than welcome. You don't have to even have come one time to be here, but just come and, and bring all your, your family and the Reiki thing especially too, but any other thing, you're, everyone's welcome. And your young adult friends. And young adult friends. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if young adult friends have ideas that they want to, you know, incorporate here, just let them come on over and tell us. Thank you. You ready? Well, we're circle up. Yeah, circle up. Enjoy. 
Outside the sun is shining, seems like heaven ain't far away. It's good to have you with us, even if it's just for the day. 